वेलकम फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर वी के चौहान होम्योपैथिक फिजिशियन वी आर रिवाइजिंग होम्योपैथिक रेमेडी बीस मत एंड दिस इज पार्ट सेवन क्लिनिकल को रिलेशन द एंटायर टेक्स्ट इज टेकन अप फ्रॉम एल एंस की नोट एंड दिस इज अ गुड रिविजन फॉर बी एच एम एस स्टूडेंट्स एंड इंटर्न वी गो टू द फर्स्ट पी क्यू आर and it tells us that solitude is unbearable desires company child holds on to its mother's hand for company and you will find similar symptom in kalicarp lilium tig and lycopodium so let us clinically try to correlate and this particular symptom points to anxiety disorder separation anxiety disorder so red flags of this particular condition include excessive distress during routine separation from a parent and there is a reluctance to go to sleep without significant adult nearby children refuse to go to school in order to stay with caregiver and there is a fear of being alone complaints of headache or stomach ache on school days repeated nightmares involving separation apart from this medical medicine indicated medicine bismuth you need to have the concurrent management also and that includes cognitive behavior psychotherapy is most suitable in cases of separation anxiety disorder in severe cases the client may require family education and family therapy <clears throat> we go to the second pqr and wish he sits then walks then lies never long in one place so this is a kind of distress which and word anguish refers to the severe physical or emotional pain or distress let us recap the exact terminology what ellen has written sits then walks then lies never long in one place these are the pointers to psychomotor agitation such people cannot stay still or stay calm they use movements to release movement to release tension and anxiety the common signs include emotional distress restlessness fidgeting tapping starting and ending task abruptly pacing fast talking hand wringing and racing thoughts are there <clears throat> in severe cases of psychomotor agitation it can lead to self inflicted harm people may rip chew or pull at skin near their lips fingernails or other body parts until they bleed the causes of psychomotor agitation include often seen in people with bipolar disorder and less common conditions include panic attacks anxiety disorders depression post traumatic stress disorder traumatic brain injuries claustrophobia and schizophrenia now we go to the pqr3 and it tells us about headache returning every winters alternating with or attended by gastralgia so whenever winter is there it triggers headache the pathophysiology of winter headache is it it is the cold which brings the atmospheric pressure changes barometric pressure changes are there in the environment resulting in hemodynamic including blood pressure mechanism changes in the body and which leads to headache cold constricts the blood vessel and contributes to headache clinically the frequency of cluster headache migraines 
and sinus headaches reaches its peak in winters these are also the overlapping conditions we need to be careful about and so how to prevent these particular episodes of headache you have to cover the head and neck with proper winter clothing keep the room warm by using radiator use a humidifier and take a steam at least twice a day to keep the sinuses clear during winter <coughs> we go to the pqr4 and it is face deathly pale blue rings around the eyes so this particular facial depiction is here and you will see in the lower diagrams a healthy woman and then suddenly you will find the dark circles and how she looks so it is a pictorial depiction of the words what we have been reading in helen's keynote in acute cases the most important cause of dark circle is dehydration which is the most common cause when the dehydration takes place the skin beneath the eyes begins to look dull in addition eyes look sunken this is due to the eyes close at proximity to the underlying bones in chronic cases people with anemia may present with dark circles under the eyes additional features include dizzy weak light headedness shortness of breath and tiredness the common causes include chronic gastritis has an impaired digestion which disturbs the absorption in the stomach and intestines that contributes to anemia and chronic bleeding piles can be one of the important causes which should not be missed and heavy menstrual bleeding can also be the one of the causes in females <coughs> we go to the pqr5 and we have to take which is better by holding cold water in mouth and similar remedies are there like bryonia coffee and pulsatilla so we need to be very uh, aware commonly aware of teeth anatomy what is the anatomy of the teeth a tooth has got a crown which has got enamel and then we have dentin and then we have inside the pulp which is the pain sensitive area and we have roots and then in roots there is the root canal through which the nerves and blood vessels get inside the teeth so this this one is a normal anatomy of the tooth and common causes of toothache include infected pulp tissue inflamed inflamed pulp tissue decay of uh, pulp abscess root abscess and inflamed ligaments surrounding the root may be the responsible causes for toothache regular toothache usually results from tooth decay or cracked tooth tooth infection cavities or dental caries exposed roots are common jaw joint deformities or disorders osteoarthritis of the temporomandibular joint can be there gum diseases are there loose filling negligent or improper dental care is very important getting something stuck in between the teeth and severe fossing biting something hard can result into the pain in the teeth holding cold water ameliorates the reason behind is the inflammation is body's natural response to any infection <clears throat> heat increases the inflammation and inflammation causes the heat local heat ice helps to relieve the inflammation and so it helps in relieving the pain also <clears throat> we go to ppr6 ppr6 a is the vomiting of water as soon as it reaches the stomach so vomiting is the body's way of ridding itself of harmful substances from the stomach or it may be a 
reaction to something that has irritated the stomach. One of the most common causes of vomiting in adults is the gastroenteritis. Active vomiting of bismuth is associated with acute gastritis, cholera, gastric carcinoma, and characteristic feature is given at PQR 6A points to acute gastritis. PQR 6B tells us about vomiting food retained longer at intervals of several days when food has filled the stomach and after 2-3 days the vomiting takes place. This points to achalasia cardia and there is a esophageal gastric sphincter. This particular sphincter is unable to relax so the food remains in the esophagus only and when it becomes dilated it accumulates lot of fluid, fluid, food substance whatever the patient has eaten and after 2-3 days there is a regurgitation and that the patient throws everything out. <clears throat> it is a rare disorder where nerves degenerate which supply the lower esophageal inspector. The esophagus becomes paralyzed and food then collects in the esophagus, it ferments and then regurgitates back into the stomach which can taste bitter. PQR 6C tells us about vomiting of all fluids as soon as taken and purging offensive stools, watery stools. Veretrum album is the similar remedy we have here. So PQR 6C tells or points toward the acute gastroenteritis. Acute gastroenteritis is an inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract involving the stomach and intestines both, usually resulting in diarrhea, abdominal cramps, nausea and vomiting. We go to PQR 6D, vomiting with convulsive gagging and inexpressible pain after lepratomy. Similar remedies are there like Nux vomica and Staphysigeria. So we find this is a very common kind of a feature which usually occurs after the abdominal operations. Post-operative vomiting is very common. Post-operative nausea and vomiting is an umbrella term that covers nausea and vomiting following any surgical procedure. Nausea and vomiting in combination are reflexes designed to protect against the absorption of toxins but olfactory, visual, vestibular and psychogenic triggers are also there which have implications for hospital ward environments. So friends, let us go to the PQR7 stomach pressure as from a load in one spot alternating with burning, pain crampy, spasmodic, with irritation, cardalgia and pyrosis. Here PQR7 mainly points to dyspepsia. Common causes include GERD, ulcers, gallbladder disease. Signs symptoms include burning in the stomach or upper abdomen, abdominal pain, bloating, belching and gas formation, vomiting, nausea, acidic taste in the mouth and growling in the stomach. Who are the high risk features? What are the high risk features we find? People of all ages and both sexes are affected. An individual's risk increases with excess of alcohol, smoking, iatrogenic like steroids and non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs like aspirin, smoking, Emotional problems like anxiety and depression can also contribute towards the dyspepsia. 
obesity is also known to cause dyspepsia. PQR8 tells us about cholera morbus and summer complaints when vomiting predominates. Stools are foul, pepescents, watery, offensive, very prostating like in cases of arsenic and veratrum album. <laughs> so PQR8 points towards the cholera. In cholera we have acute diarrheal disease caused by infection of the intestine with the Vibrio cholerae and its incubation period is 2 hours to 5 days and it produces symptomatically profuse watery diarrhea which is rice, water, stools, vomiting is there, dehydration takes place and because of dehydration circulatory collapse and shock also takes place. And generally it gets infected with contaminated water or food. The bacteria exists the body through feces. Feces can be contagious for up to 14 days in the environment. So cholera is an acute diarrheal disease caused by infection of intestine with Vibrio cholera. Bacteria people can get sick when they swallow food or water contaminated with cholera bacteria. And that particular symptom is given in PQR8. So friends, thank you very much for patient listening.